the real stuff? I can smell it from here. Yeah. It smells like banana. No. <laughs> Woo! It be sprayed on top of it. When you mix it, you need to basically encapsulate the aromatics, which is what we did there. Mm. You want to taste it? I want to smell it. Smell a little bit, but not as strong as it was. Huh. So once it encapsulates, what you have right now is the surfactants of creating an encapsulation process around your finger. And try it's warm, and, and it's right. actually gelling. <laughs> Yeah, the, How, is it not hot? What's the, 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 the gel is not. The Just the, the glass. Just the glass. Twice as big as this No. The gas. It's the gasoline and your product. It's a little bit. Yeah, depending on your spill. Right now, you're, I only put a little bit of, hmm. of, of the actual surfactant in this because I didn't want to overwhelm it. Obviously, this is what would be the most, the highest portion of the mix because you're. you're Still Shooting it like a foam into, into a fire or into uh, a spill, let's say that's a gaseous spill. Okay, let's say but let's this, say this has to be air. You know what air entrainment is, right? Yes, mm -hmm. air entrainment. <laughs> the reason why I had to batter it is because it's not air entrainment. Right. If you air entrain it when it goes into yeah, the yeah. shaft, and it, those air bubbles oh, can easily encapsulate the, uh, the sure. spheres. And that's why it's lost its aromatics because it encapsulates the spheres is actually what encapsulates the actual gases and it traps them. So it can't be harmful. Okay, but if we have a 20 barrel spill, let's just say, let's just say it's a one-to-one. So one to one. one to one. So it's one to one. So one to 20 one. barrels of crude oil, yeah. 20 barrels one of One to one, but remember it's 30%, uh, 70%. 30% of your product, your product and 70% of the surfactant, surfactant which you're air training into the And then what happens with the surfactant? If it rains, does it run, run the soap, the surfactant off to a lake, or does it stay right this, there? This is basically, the surfactant is made of the same materials as the oil because a byproduct of actual enzyme production is the Now, but this is never going to turn into concretia. It's never no, going this, to become that, right? This is biocompatible. You know, you can eat it. You can eat the stuff. And it's also eco-friendly, so you leave it, you can leave it in situ. Situ. We're going to do some petrol. Stuff. But this, this won't ever be this, but this is safe for the environment. Mm -hmm. If it runs off, if it rains and it runs off to the lake, it's, it's good. Okay. No problem. I mean, it, it, it's compatible with the ecosystem. Okay, it's in there. You can smell it. Does it smell like anything? Does it taste like anything? Taste it, Jerry. Run the Jerry Don. He put it in his mouth. Do it. <laughs> do, uh, do this with it. You know what? Finley will be so this, proud of you. This one is. Well, he's going to. He has a. But, he but has a. Do it what he's got tobacco in his mouth. Before. He didn't want to mix it. I knew that. <laughs> Do it in a concentrated form to, to really, because uh, this is mixed. Okay. I didn't see you taste that. I saw you taste that. I'll do both. <laughs> and he got a good, God. he got a good scoop. <laughs> Hold on, Jerry. That's local Cubano. Guajito, Guajito. Guajito. Really? You have to try that with every chemical you Is it lemon one. flavored? It kind of looks. <laughs> no, very bland. And I guarantee you won't get the shits today. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm going to have the other. I'm going to have this. Right. No, it's. Uh, and you tell me that's all okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll know later on, Jerry. And the EPA is going to say, you know, because like, like on one ranch, I know one ranch, and the ranch is. The, the oil wells on this ranch are maybe from here to the dump over there from the city's land, Thanks. The, the water no supply, problem. the lake. No problem. Mm -hmm. So they have big, big berms around for containment to keep it. diffuse into the ecosystem. The moment it rains, it just goes and diffuses. Watch. If you put water in here, go ahead. Okay, so, so a 10-barrel spill, 10-barrel spill is probably going to cost them, they figure somewhere around, depending on the distance, as cheap as it's very, since it's very uh, concentrated, it takes very little. This is a, uh, this takes some, uh, where's the oil? Okay. Mix it together. What is that you're putting on? Soil. Just some soil with oil. 
because this is, let's say, let's just say. What kind of oil is this? Is this, is this the crude? This crude petro. Is it crude or is it just used up motor oil? Or That's actually the sludge of the New York guys. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it doesn't smell exactly like crude, but. No. That's the stuff that we got. It's not West Texas. It's not West Texas. Yeah. Yeah. This one is exothermic. This, this one's more exothermic? Yes. It's going to melt your jar. Very exothermic then, because it's boiling. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. The, the more toxic it is, the higher the temperature is going to go. So what about hydrochloric acid? Is it going to? No, this is this is oxygen. That's just. And oxygen. this is pure oxygen. Steam. This is okay. So on hydrochloric acid, what is it? Oxygen. It converts to oxygen. Right yeah. now, it's it's doing its thing. You saw how very little of it I put in. Yeah. So what you do is you keep injecting. Then you want to that's you want to put the surfactant. Treat it with the surfactant. Probably around. Back again with this. This is all mixed into one solution, guys. I'm just breaking it down for you so you see the sequence. And so when this is finished doing its job and it rains next week and you got 20 barrels of this on the ground and it runs to the lake, it's okay. No, this is in situ. This is this is separate yeah. now from, from what we did before. Okay. This is a mud we're creating mm -hmm. that's gonna be inert. Yeah. We'll do the T clip study will show that this is non-toxic. The idea is to leave it in the ground. If you have this in the ground in a sump, like I told you, uh -huh. you just keep treating it until that sump fills up. And then you don't you don't want to have to haul it away. They just cover it up. Yeah, yeah, then you just cover it up like like a drain fill. Yeah. But they've already had the sump there anyway. If you watch it, it's reactive right now, converting. Now you have all the three elements in there. You have polyrem, polar oxide, <laughs> okay, and I'm and I'm clocking it. I clocked it. The higher exothermic I want to go, I can clock it, but because you said that you basically want to leave it in the ground. It's cheaper to leave it, yeah? Yeah, it's cheaper to leave it. Now, I can solidify it. See, what I'm thinking is that we might make it more expensive to leave it. You want to make it a, a, a cementitious material? Is that what you want to do? Can solidify it. Can you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure can. Make it a... So in a real-world scenario where this is laying on top of soil, what are we looking at? Two days worth of work or a week worth? Or? The reaction occurs, as you see, immediately. But you, what you want to do is you want to leave it in there. You, it, you can either make it a solid or make it uh, a mud. But if it's using the same indigenous soil that's there, you combine it with that soil and it turns into an inert mud. So let's say we that's when you say you leave it in uh, a year or two later, it actually will support life again. Okay, so what, what do we do? What, what, what's the process? Do we have a, a tractor out there with a big tank injecting this? Two tractors, three tractors, one injecting each chemical? Yes. That's how it's done. I mean, I'm not a remediation contractor, but I know about remediation. You do you right. have a topography study, a plume study. Right. Then every 12 feet, you take a four-inch injector, and you're digging in 12 feet. you got a one, one bar. You go 12 feet deep, <coughs> and then you spray out the circumference. Right. And that it's going to do exactly what we're doing here, but you're impregnating it. So it's, like soil, it's like soil injection. Yeah, injection. Soil stabilization. Yeah, same, 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 yeah. Thing. same, same exact, same exact machinery and everything. Yeah, we do. We make roads with it. We do soil and this is non-corrosive, so it's not going to rust out all the injections. It's you said it's no. very. It's going to work. It's yeah. Compatible. We've had soil. I've had soil stabilized. We've, we've stabilized same, before. Same, same, yeah. <clears throat> 
Then you'll do the T clip studies. <coughs> yeah, that's plenty exothermic. That's yeah, it, it goes to about uh, uh, 60 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. The more toxic it is, the higher the temperature. Because mm -hmm. it's got, it's got to re it has to reduce it down to a zero Kelvin value. So toxins, the higher the toxins, the higher the Kelvin yeah, the higher value. Temperature. So when it goes down, when this cools down, it's in there. Right now it's hot because it's still converting. When this goes cold, which will be probably in an hour, it's going to go cold. That's when it's in there. It's already lost. Now, how long is it going to be before that solidifies? Oh, this is not going to solidify until, unless I add uh, oh, an aggregate something. to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the aggregate is just thickening it? Any kind of aggregate, or do you? Well, it's going to gel on its own, but uh, yeah, the other <laughs> aggregate. Right now, what I showed you is just petrol without right. with very little soil that's mm -hmm. outside. But generally, it's more soil yeah, than soil. Soil. Yeah. So it will have a tendency to gel on you and become a solid.